And hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening again, everyone. You should be able to hear me just fine. And uh, yeah, I want to welcome everybody. Good to have you here. Just getting some things squared away, making sure I can see your beautiful faces. And I'm happy that you're uh, joining me today again. So hi again, Cody Bear. Steve, what's up, Alyssa? Uh, all right, Alyssa, you are in for a treat. Yes, today is Masterclass Day. I know Terry just covered um, like his favorite Photoshop filters, which is awesome. Photoshop um, Daily Creative Challenge with Voodoo Val, and now we're continuing the Photoshop action with uh, Masterclass around creating a complex collage. Thank you, Michelle, you're the best. Frank, what's up, buddy? I'm waving to you, hi. So it's good to have you guys here. Uh, yeah, you guys make my day because you guys are my coworkers, basically. So we're gonna dive into this. Uh, we're gonna do something um, around uh, uh, basically a complex collage. So we're gonna throw a lot at this design since it's a master class and I like dealing with lots of layers and making some fun, like complex compositions. So, and again, cause it's a master class, why not? So Benjamin's in the house, might I add. Yeah, Benjamin's here, so we may begin. And, uh, hello. Hello there. Oh, show you something. Arsalan says, show you something even Adobe devs don't know. Um, yeah, uh, I know the devs probably know a lot, but also the developers work in a lot of specific areas. So yeah, I'm sure there's some uh, features that they're unaware of. But let's just dive into this, shall we? You know what, life's a mixtape, um, but we're gonna do a complex collage. And uh, this is how I typically get started. So we're gonna throw a lot at, life contains lots of layers. So um, that's why I wanna kinda focus on maybe a quote like this or something like this, something around life, as you can see. There we are, life. Okay, we'll throw a lot at this. In fact, what I'm actually doing in the background, here we go, let's jump into uh, dimension really fast because I thought of going in either with flat text like that or going with something more fun like this. So with an angle and then having all these elements kind of jumping out of it. Uh, it's gonna be more complex, obviously 3D versus something flat, two different ways to approach this, you know? Um, so this should be fun. So I'm gonna take this, again, this is just, I'm in dimension, I get it. I'm gonna convert these to just a standard model for each one because you could add this text uh, directly in uh, dimension. Let's drop on this. Come on, buddy. Let's just drop it on this text here. And uh, yeah, so I was thinking like, do, uh, do we do something more colorful like that? But nonetheless, that's kind of the concept. So we'll play with this as we go along. It's like a hipper version of life is like a box of chocolates. <laughs> That's right, let's repeat it. Um, I really wanna wrap this all, over, all the way around, but anyways. Uh, let's get into this, because I've already rendered this out as well. So just to save us time, this is already rendered as well. So what happens is you'll render this in Dimension. We can open up this PSD. Sure enough, here it is. Nice and clean, looking pretty cool. Right, took me like five minutes, right? Um, and what's cool about this is we not only have that background that we could obviously change the color of, right? but we also have uh, these different layers in here. So these additional layers are gonna allow us to kind of like select, maybe put stuff on the inside, kind of coming out of it, all sorts of fun things. So that's what we have with this. Um, but let's put this as part of, um, let's put these two together basically. Life. So again, I, I thought life is a mixtape because I wanted to do like a retro collage so that's why this phrase seems to work, okay? So life is a mixtape. There we go, drop that in there, and we have two we can play with. But let's get into making this complex. Com complex? That's complex, yes. Ah, all right, here we are, boom, shabam. All right, I don't know which one you guys like. You like the 3D or the flat version? Um, and that's just kind of what I'm what I'm thinking about the 3D um, or the flat version. What do you think? 
Um, yeah, so just kind of curious. Again, we'll load in our layers first and uh, get this party started. So I'm gonna show you, um, I don't know if you're like me, like I've already cut out a lot of things um, from various resources. So know that you could always go in, you know, again, grab something like this, hand, any image, right? And quite frankly, what I simply do for most of these, I'll just do a remove background, okay, boom, right? It'll get most parts of it. If you don't like that, uh, that uh, light gray, obviously you can change the preferences, right? You can adjust the transparency, right? And make that look darker if you want to. And uh, that's just an easy way to kind of see what's going on. Did you know this is for your pro users, you ready for this? This is for your Marshes of the world, your Michelles, your Franks. Um, let's say I want to change, you know, you can change the color of this background as well using like the paint bucket tool. So I can go in here. Um, maybe I have this set to like a different color. Yeah, let's go with, uh, hold on, let's go, Boop. let's go with really fast a whatever purplish color paint bucket tool oops so sorry there we go and hold down the shift key and that's how you could actually change that background if you care to right so again that's just a random pro tip i don't know why i'm telling you that you know but you can change that to black if you want to or just right click and you can see here you have custom or select custom color. I just like that you could do it. So when you said devs, like what do the de what what are some things the devs don't know? Uh, it might be something like that. All right, so we have that hand. That's what I've done, right? Take that, do what you want with it, right? Take that, uh, 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 drop that into, you know, our design like so. All righty. Okay, but I already did all that hard work for you, and I'd also convert this to a symbol. I already did all this stuff, so let's get into this. Let's get into this. Oh, you could prank people all day long in Photoshop. You could mess with people. All right, so there we go. There we have our fun hand or arm. Okay, so um, know that I've actually already cut out a ton of stuff. So we can see that all in my libraries, you know, whether it's my nature stuff. So I got a ton of that already like cut out that I can sort of drag and drop in. Okay, we got that. Also on my desktop, right? Um, I have a ton of images. Let's go to some images that I have really fast. Uh, it's even called collage. Hey, how about that? Um, Let's go with, say food, for instance. I have all these JPEGs, right? I can click and drag and import them that way. That's gonna take all day. So typically, if you're gonna make a complex collage, this is probably the most important thing you need to know about, right in here. Load files from automate, from scripts, not automate, I get those two mixed up. Load files into stack. Okay. Uh, is that Freddy? Does Freddy always show that? That's cool. That's cool. Um. <laughs> All right. So check this out. Like locate files or an entire folder. So I'll just browse to that same location and we'll just all load all this stuff in really fast. All right, because we don't got that kind of time, right? Let's take all these. This entire folder, all this stuff of food. Maybe I'll use some, I don't know. We're gonna find out shortly. Heck, you know what? I might do random. I think we are gonna find some more fun things in random. But either way, I could take all these, we'll just click open, we'll click okay, because it's gonna add this folder and might take a second. But this is just um, a good way to work. Just wait for it. I don't know how many files, probably like 80 files. Huh, so where you just sit back and say cheers, folks. Welcome, Arsalan. Um, yeah, 3D for an intro, flat for an ending, yeah. Um, yeah, okay. All right, change the coffee to peppermint now. 
but you can see what it's doing. Obviously loading everything into layers. What I also like about this is it actually keeps the file name. So for some reason I need to go back and find that particular file. I have that file name to go off of, right? One thing I wish this did that it doesn't do is I want it to convert every single thing into a smart object as soon as I, as soon as it loads it in as a layer as well. So that's one thing I wish it had. Um, so I got to do that manually and I just created a shortcut for it. All right. So this will be done in a second. It is an awesome week for streams. Hey, Susan, and Anna. Yeah. Sweet. All right. So this is one thing I do is I load in flat images. I would use other resources. So like look at plugins because there's a free stock search, um, uh, plug in for Photoshop so you could search and find your own images, cut them out, do things like that. Uh, same thing for uh, Pixel Squid. So that's the other resource I'd use. I'd use Pixel Squid to grab some images. So this is this is loading in. Let me know if you guys have questions or whatnot as I take a look. Is there a limit to the number of images you can load? No, there's just a limit to the amount of time you have. <laughs> or uh, whatever, it's, it's limited, to, limited to your patience. So we have to have patience as it's loading up all these. But what I usually do is I only do this once and then I save this as a random.psd file. So it has all my random graphics in one particular uh, file. So, so many images. I shouldn't have selected so many and I apologize. I feel, I feel kind of bad, but it should be done here shortly. Uh, what is nice is we can go out and see, yeah, it's loading up 66 items and we could even watch the progress right over here. Uh, down to the last, like maybe 10 images is where we're at. Okay. But again, I would use something like pixel squid too. So we'll go out there again, stock.hobby.com, right? You could click on free find what you need right in here. Here's all your free stuff. So your free photos, for instance, that you can also use. Why would you load them into a stack versus into your library? Judith, great question. Um, to be honest with you, like I've reached a cap with the uh, amount of space that I have in libraries. So that's why I'm actually loading them in from my desktop. I have s basically my library is full already pretty much. So um, that's why I kind of pull them from my desktop right now. Okay. But yes, the ultimate goal, and that's what I've done for like the images that I know I use a lot, I'll bring in here. And if I'm smart, I will name them because this is also searchable, which is awfully nice. So if I need a bike, we could search bike or a uh, vehicle, nothing. How about, uh, you know, again, flower. I know I have plenty of flowers, right? There we are. Boom, boom, shabam, shabimo. What's nice about that is that is linked back to the file. Uh, so it's resolution independent, which is awesome. Okay. Okay. We got that. We got that good. Let's get this party started. Zoop, zoop, doo -doo. Zoop, zoop. Shrink. Yeah, that's right. I'm shrinking it all down. These are so huge. And you get the idea. Yeah, you probably could have guessed my library as well. You know, do you guys ever do that? Do you ever uh, practice productive procrastination where you'll just like organize random files, um, you know, to avoid actual work? Do you ever do that? I do that. So my, my productive procrastination is organizing my library and my desktop and stuff. All right, so here it is. Guess what? I've already all done this for a ton of images. Look, what? Look at all this stuff. What, 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 what? So you can see it loaded it all in. We can see it here. Great, Paul. Did it. Boom. Uh, for navigating around here, just hold down the command key. So you have your selection tool. And then if you hold down the command, it will auto select. So that's what I'll typically do. I'll jump out, auto select, click and it's automatically gonna select that layer so I can kind of move it out of the way and really see what this is all about. All this fun stuff that I could use. Again, life is a mixtape, I don't know. I might even change the quote, but the important thing is I need to get all these images in there. Right, Rubik's Cube is great. Bam, bam, bam. Uh, like I said, I already did this, so here's all the lovely images already cut out and uh, you can see everything. 
Yeah, that's when you do Yes. Cl- Cody, do you do that? Do you like clean? I don't know if anybody like cleans their house. Like everything has to be perfect before you actually begin uh, designing, <laughs> you know, which again, could be better. So again, since we're dealing with the complex collage, we ultimately want to get this saved out. You guys get the idea. This is just more like file management uh, random. I'm like, okay, I never want to do that again. Everything's now in layers in one PSD. Uh, oh yeah, uh, no, 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 Br- by the way, yeah. Marsha, no, that's great. Bridge is awesome. Bridge is not old school. Uh, I'm gonna check something in Bridge really fast. What I love about Bridge is we get a nice preview of the image, which is honestly better than uh, your Apple desktop, if you ask me, Apple's Finder. Okay, and from within here, okay, that was added, great. Oh, that's what we made earlier today, look at that. But uh, let's just take this, let's open up that. This is the file that I was dealing with. And uh, yeah, let's put this in favorites. Right, I want my collage to be bam, right there, boom. This is what's awesome about Bridge. Ugh, this is my absolute favorite feature about Bridge. Right, obviously the scaling, we can jump into say Christmas, we get all those previews like we expected. But this is what I love, I'm like, hey, I need, I don't know, an apple or I need a, I need a boat. I need that sailboat, I don't know where it is. Being able to view Show items from subfolders. You you lost a file. You just only visually know what it l- looks like. Show items from subfolders. Now it's showing me every graphic in all of these folders and we'll start loading them all up, right? And then I'm like, hey, well, I remember it was in one of these three folders or five folders and I remember it was a ping file. So there, we'll click on ping image and sure enough, it's just showing me the ping images within all those files. So I absolutely love that. From there, we can select all three of those or however many we want. Uh, and you ready for this? Oh, are you ready for this? Which might be why you brought it up. Um, okay, thank you. Uh, Cody asks, can you explain Bridge? Don't really know what it is. Bridge is like sort of a file management slash viewing tool that Adobe has. So this is almost like pre, I, th- I think it predates Lightroom, but I'm not sure. Uh, somebody probably will correct me on that. Um, but just, it was an, a way to be able to see lots of images to um, kind of navigate your folders and then kind of organize them. So notice how in here, just like it, with uh, good old um, Lightroom, I could click five, oh, we'll do it. You could start rating images and categorizing them and different things like that. Okay, so I needed to do command five. I was like, okay, I really like this image. Command five. I just gave this, made this image a five star image, right? I really like this one down here. Command four. Basically, that's what I'm doing is uh, sorting rating images and that's about it. Okay. Okay, again, the cool thing. Ooh, this might be nice too. Some of these. Ooh, I didn't even know those were in here. Hey, let's do that. Take some of these. Uh, just like before, load images into stack. We can go to tools, Photoshop, and then load files into Photoshop layers. Boom. So that's what's happening. It's loading up all these. It's doing the exact same thing. So now you have two ways, run from within Photoshop, one from within Bridge to load everything into one PSD, which is nice. Yeah, you give them stars uh, and categorize them in bridge. Yep, or you, or you can do that, yes. And again, it's some of those bridge, or excuse me, those Lightroom features um, that kind of predate Lightroom, I guess. But yeah, we have people who just like love bridge and I do too. I, I think if you're presenting to a client or even doing a presentation in front of a lot of people, it's just a very nice clean interface uh, for showing files rather than your desktop. Because if I see somebody's desktop, I'm bored. I'm like, oh geez, he's showing me his desktop. It's like, no, I don't want to see your camera roll. No, no, no. Ah, oh, okay. We have it, we have it, we have it, folks. We have all this stuff. Hey, let's do it. Shortcuts. Shortcuts. Yeah, we're gonna see how many I can get. Uh. <laughs> Leah, that's funny. 
Okay, I just decided to drag like 120 layers into another PSD. Because that's what I do. Okay, thank you. Bridge, thank you, Arsalan, thank you so much. Uh, Bridge re was released in 2005. And then Lightroom's initial release. I, I, I think that might be uh, Lightroom and not Lightroom Classic, but you did say Lightroom initial release 2017. I'm pretty sure it's older than that. Uh, but look for a Lightroom Classic release and see if it predates 2005. Okay. All right. Got all of our files. Command G, boom. Hopefully try to show you how to navigate um, a uh, PSD like a pro when you're dealing with a ton of layers like this. Okay. Boom, boom. By the way, uh, kind of what I'm working on here, and uh, I thought I'd do a different collage, but to give you an idea of uh, kind of uh, an earlier version that I've done of this, just to inspire you, I'll uh, show you this really fast. And again, I don't know if people are like following me. Oh, not that one. Whew. So let me show you this really fast. Here's sort of a one that's already completed. All right. Get rid of that. Again, when we're talking complex collage, this is kind of what I'm referring to. Here's our sort of final PSD. So we're gonna go kind of this route with a different image. So, wait, what are you looking for? Are you? Uh... Okay, so I'm sorry, is there, I'm sorry, Tim's probably sending me a message about this right now. It's probably uh, a left or right issue, but it should be cleared up now. Let's see. Oh, well, I don't know what's happening, Tim. Just let me know, and I don't know, I'll open up Slack. DM me. All right. So again, here we are, this is the final piece. Let's escape. We wanna, f we have this now, we kinda have this laid out. This is just the final version. We're gonna do something like this, um, either with this text or with an image. I'm kinda curious to see what you guys, um, uh, there was some music on the right channel. That's so interesting, it was on the right channel. Uh, either way, it should be good now. Here we have all this, right? We can start to tackle this right now and t boom boom i've already done uh a lot of this work which is nice and we start to create our collage all right okay thank you lightroom 1.0 was released in february 20 the beta was in 2006 so yeah garth i guess uh bridge does predate lightroom by a year or so so awesome Oh yeah, peppermint coffee. It's like Christmas. It's like Christmas around here. All right, so I just like this idea of having all these images like explode out of something. Okay, again, our original text. Here's some additional text. Let's get rid of these two. Right, we can start uh, potentially staging all these everywhere. Holy cow. Right, so how the heck are we gonna do this? There's a lot going on. Luckily, for each image, of course, each one's on its own layer. You could start naming them if you want to. So if you double click, you'd call this watch. If you hit the tab key, it will go to the next layer. So you can say flowers, right? If you're that particular, uh, flower one. It's just a matter of hitting the tab key, navigating down. So when you're dealing with lots of layers, this is pretty important. Also, when you're dealing with lots of layers, navigating around this, still, command click. It'll jump directly to that layer, and I can kind of move that around. So let's just let's just have some fun, right? It's command click, boom, select this building, put this building in the background, right? I want to actually that building is already back 
there. Let's move it behind the text. Call this uh, buildings or background or something like that. There we go. And there we go. And now we can get this party started. Oh, so much to do in here. So much going on. We're going to put that on there. We're going to put this guy over here. Right. Um, yeah, all these images I got to play with. Right. As I click around, obviously, I accidentally clicked on the text or I might accidentally click on the background. So let's just change that color. Make that white. Uh, we want to lock those two down. So taking the background, taking the text, locking it down so I don't accidentally select it. Okay. Cool. Look at all those layers. Hopefully you're into it. Now let's let's talk about like navigating around these layers. Like I want this lovely little car to be in front of these other layers. So yes, you can go to your layers panel and move it up, or you can use the command key and use your uh, opening and closing brackets. So closing bracket will move it up. And what you could do to bring it to the very top, hold down the shift key. So shift command, closing bracket, shabam, brings it to the top of that folder. Hit it again, and it's gonna bring it to the very top of all of the layers. So that's what you kinda wanna do when you're navigating around all this stuff. It's like, oh, here's another situation. I want this car in front of everything. Uh, shift command, closing bracket, bring it all the way to the top like that. Okay, so that's what I'm doing here. I notice I got this weird shadow. What's that all about? Let's get rid of that shadow, Paul. Boom. Uh, okay, so there's no, Arslan, there's no shortcut to turn pings into uh, smart objects, unfortunately. I really wish there was. Uh, what you need to do is just make your own, say, like landscapes, for instance. These are currently just ping files. They're not smart objects. So rather than doing this each time, you want to make your own shortcut. So you guys know how to make shortcuts, keyboard shortcuts. That's the best advice I got for you. Or you can make it an action, right? I do keyboard shortcuts. Oh, wrong one. Oops. I have keyboard shortcuts for a couple things. Uh, control, Option, Command, S for smart object. So that's what I do, S. Uh, vanilla tea does sound good. Smart object, smart object, smart object. Just protecting all those pixels. But this might be cool in the background too, this whole folder, right? We could take that and do the same thing even with an entire folder uh, using those shortcuts, moving it behind everything else if I want to and uh, maybe adding a layer mask to this whole folder as well. Right, I will still work on that one, right? We'll get this squared away. We'll get hopefully something interesting before long, before the day is up. Let's check the time, 30 minutes in. Thanks so much for joining me, um, Arsalan. Yeah, so thank you, Arsalan mentions the shadow. I think the shadow does look pretty good. For the, um, for the uh, car, but uh, that's something I'm gonna add like at the very end. And personally, this these flat layers are not working that great with this 3D text. So we have like contradicting styles. Flat images, 3D text, not quite working, right? So honestly, if I was going with this route, I would actually not uh, use that text. I would use this other text that we have in here where it says, life is a mixtape. I would use this one. So anyway, that's a style thing. All right. Because really what happen what's happening here is we have all these gorgeous shadows. I need to add all these gorgeous shadows to all of my uh, objects. Why? Why did I why did I pick this project? 
Do you ever go through that? You're like, oh, what am I doing? What am I even doing with my life? There's way too much going on in here. What are you doing, Paul? Making dreams come true, folks. Let's do it. When I'm dealing with a lot of uh, files, I uh, I don't name my layers as much as I end up naming my folders. So this might be my mid-ground, background. In this case, this is like technology, my technology layer. And uh, let's move that text on up, right? And start seeing some of this in the right spot. Lots going on here, folks. Let's take a chunk of this. Throw it in there. Okay, uh, you guys like the ambition? You know what? Sometimes you just gotta, you gotta bite off more than you can chew and, and chew like hell, as they say. All right, I don't know who said that, but I'm into the quote. Okay, so we'll add these, add that little guy there. Some of these items are actually not in perspective. So we'll, we'll talk about that in a second. Send it to the back, buddy. Okay, kind of like these things exploding around. We'll add some shadows. We'll shrink this guy up. Command T, auto rotate. We'll have some of this content. Let's just get rid of that really fast. But like, you know, of course we're gonna have some lovely flowers kind of coming out of this. Cause it wouldn't be my design if we didn't have flowers here. Okay, so, uh, <laughs> oh, Cody, killing me. All right, so I'm gonna take this. Uh, you know, this is easy enough. I'm just gonna mask it. Let's let's not let's not kill ourselves. You guys know how to do this stuff. Not to leave out anything, but uh, if I hold down the Option key and I click Add Layer Mask, it's going to remove whatever I had selected. So hold down the Option key to uh, create a mask with either black or white. Right, but now we have that there, we'll unlock it. Right, we can kind of we can kind of move this around as well. Right, what I can also do is I can say, hey, you know what? Let's throw this stuff in there. Let's take some of this stuff, put it in here. I'm just gonna clean this up a little bit. Clean it up. Here we go, it's actually not that bad. There we go. Cool, look at, look at, how, look at how nice this is. Uh, do I have a favorite Photoshop tool? Uh, remove background, because it's easiest. And of course I'm gonna make everything a smart object. Um, so yeah. Okay, so life is a mixtape. Still a little, I need to kind of adjust this a little bit more. In fact, that's what I might do right now, image. Uh, what's cool is since this background is a solid color and not a pixel image, just do a canvas size. And we're gonna give this more headroom because we need just more rooms before the, the graphics. There we go. So something like that, maybe a little less. Apologies. Uh, 2300. There we go. All right, and this is our life. Let's do this dance. A lot of these vehicles are kind of sitting like so. Ooh, I like this one. This is fun. Let's have this guy coming out of there as well. 
Yeah. Uh, this angle is not perfect. I actually kind of want to find a spot where it is, where it fits a little better, but I don't know. It is actually okay. So let's do this. You ready for this? This is going to be interesting. Let's move that out of the way. I have not used this in a while. Perspective warp. Okay, so I want to change the perspective of this van. So we're going to click and drag to define the planes and we're going to snap those to define the corners. Okay, so we're going to do bam. It has been a while since I've used this. I should be able to Add to this. There we go. Like that. Okay. We have this at the correct angle. Now we're going to warp it. So now we're gonna move these warp pins to manipulate the perspective. So we'll take this, move it up. So it's moving that upward without uh, obviously changing the front of that little Volkswagen. A little bit of a seam right there. You know what? It's good enough for what they're paying me for. So nobody's paying me for this project. But pretty cool, that is perspective uh, perspective warp. Thanks, Steven. Yeah, I have not used that in ages, but I was like, oh yeah, this is a perfect. That's again, another maybe um, feature that uh, people might overlook. Because again, you only use it on occasion which you, when you really need it. Ultimately, so I would do that. Okay, what is this magic exactly? Norsh, how you doing? So move that over like so, right? We'll throw a little bit of blending just so you know how this would be done. I would have my sort of shad, shadow on this lovely little guy. Hit B for brush. Come in here just lightly with the flow. There we go. Have that look like it's kind of coming out. And also add some shadows underneath Right, so this is a shadow on top. Technically, I'd have to put another layer underneath and uh, throw that down like so. Oops. There we go. Okay, cool. So that's what I need to do to every single element in here. Holy moly. Um, Oh, you could have used that a hundred times in the past month. Man, I'm not doing my job. Cause you guys should be knowing, you should know about these sort of things. And if you don't, that is my fault. Or at least I kind of feel like it is cause it's my job to keep you informed about this. Okay. Um, so, yeah. I'm just gonna keep this simple for now. Option select, unlink. We have our flower just like so, right? And still adding that shadow, right? This seems like a lot of work and guess what? You would be right. Cause you know what? Anything worth doing is going to take some time, but you could really see how this is kind of coming together, hopefully. Okay, so I did want to point out, say for instance, we have a, um, love this car back here. 
Uh, we need an object and perspective warp's not gonna do it, okay? We're thinking, okay, we need, we need to bring out the big guns. So here's the big guns and let me save my file first. The big guns being, click over, shove them. I would say pixel squid. Oh, well, yeah, pixel squid, thank you. There's turbo squid and there's pixel squid, but I would actually use pixel squid and I would search for, uh, name something, I don't know, that, uh, what's another cool item we need? We, uh, what do you think? Let's do Walkman. Let's see what we get. Type in Walkman. Oh yeah, baby. This is awesome. This is exactly what we need. I want kind of this Walkman in perspective. So here's an 80s sports Walkman. Perfect. Uh, looks like I do have to log in. Sorry about that. Everybody got that? Got my username, got my password? Good, let's do it. Add to Lightbox, Photoshop, boom. It's added to my Lightbox, okay? This does cost money you know, because they are a company and they got to pay their employees somehow. Just, just crazy, crazy talk. Just kidding. Pixel Squid. It has a, we have a plugin for it too. Pixel Squid. Shavam. Oh, banana. Thank you so much for that. Because my banana earlier was flat. Okay. So no jokes, but yes, that's exactly. Um, here's my light boxes. Sure enough, there it is. Notice how we can search from right in here as well. So let's do this really fast. Let's go to the top. Let's take that, let's drop it in. There it is. Oh, it's looking so nice. You ready for this? Option click on the eyeball, bam. That will just show this one item so I can work on it. Uh, I'm gonna turn off the shadow and now I'm gonna just kind of like rotate this, give it like an interesting angle. Kind of like seeing the play buttons on the side, so maybe something like that. Okay, resolution, click on high. All right. And uh, high, there we go. Wait for it. There it is. Option click on that eyeball and we're back. Okay, so use pixel squids, awesome. Shout out to them. Yeah, Adobe's Talk, Pixel Squid. If you want free resources, like I said, use plugins. Uh, you know, free stock, stock search. So you could use free stock search and you can try Walkman. There, find it. Uh, we already have a tape, but again, I can always use this. You know, take that and again, use my favorite feature to uh, remove background that way. But again, obviously it doesn't have the perspective that I want. Okay, got that, take it, shrink it, rotate it. Much better. Wherever my other Walkman was, look at that. This is the one I was gonna use. This lame guy. Let's get rid of that. Take this one, much better. Let's do some more. And checking the time, I have about 15 minutes. Uh, auto rewind. Ah, well played, Norsh. Yeah, auto rewind was huge. So, into it. All right, back in here. What else do we have? Bunch of weird stuff. Um, banana. There we are, banana. I don't know why a banana is in here, but don't you think bananas and oranges are kind of a big deal when you're a kid? Like you, as a kid, you will eat a banana. You're like, oh, I want a banana for a snack. And oranges are cool. Anytime you played soccer, I don't know if you ever got a break and ha got to have oranges. That was kind of a treat. 
But there's our banana, turned off the shadows, rotated it. We'll see it come into play like so. There it is. Easy enough. Continue on my way. All right. I'm just not a fan of all these flat objects. So let's still look for a radio. Apple Mac, oh, let's do a Mac. Yes, let's do it. Okay, so let's do this first. Yeah, let's get this one. By the way, nobody owned her. I didn't know. I don't know anyone uh, uh, who owned a radio that looked like this. This is like um, I don't know. This is like a Gen Z. I don't know. I don't even know what the... This is what an 18-year-old thinks their parents listen to. <laughs> but anyways, it's just a nondescript radio. It'll work for us. Let's put it in there. And again, replacing this whatever this thing is. And we'll do a Mac, too. So again, um, command click finds the layer. Then hit delete. And uh, we're good to go. So let's do Mac. Let's just do Mac, see what comes up. <sighs> okay. Well, let's do this one. Um, oh, you did a 3D radio that made it, you made in Photoshop. Awesome to hear. You, you had a massive bake light cased radio. Wow. I don't even know what that is. And I'm old. There it is. Let's give this an angle. Ah, uh, you know, maybe we'll keep the shadows on. Okay. Let me do this really fast. Do high res, option click again. Uh, yeah, I don't know, what do you think? All right, we got it. It's not beige, right? We can make this beige. Probably could give it a color overlay or tint it. I don't know what you want to do. Um, cool. Misayu is back and has their internet back. Good to hear, you know? Uh, let's get that lovely uh, beige color like so. There's our beige color. And then we'll just do uh, color. If we go down to color, we're just stealing the color from layer three. And now let's work on this color a little bit more. Take down that saturation. There we go. Beige is what we're looking for. And then I'll black the screen out too. I know the lines aren't perfect, but hopefully it's small enough that uh, nobody notices. Oh, I should just steal this screen. All right. Uh, obviously, this is a lot of work, um, but you know what? Such is life. Rasterize layer. I'm going to combine those two. All right, this is what I should have did in the first place. I was I was close with the color, right? Not quite there. Take that down a touch more. Bam, got it. 
Let's take the insides here. Uh, full day of master classes. I think uh, Jason is up next. I know he's going to be making something cool because he always does. I like tuning into his uh, right after mine. I just kind of keep. I stay in chat, guys. I'm actually secretly watching, even though I don't say much. There we go. Boom. Nailed it. Right. I'm so confident in this. Heck, let's make it a smart object. There we are. Mac. Done. Whoever requested that, it's done. Um, make something pop. Sure, we can make something pop out of the screen. I kind of have to do a lot of work between now and, uh, you know, before doing any of that. So. But I like it. These are flowers. everyone doing? I feel like I'm slowing down a little. I think this is looking good. You know, we also need to curate. Like, some of these images are just horrible. Like, let's be honest with ourselves. Again, move it to the back. Move it to the back. Shortcut keys. I guess that's my big takeaway. It's like, if you want to create a complex collage quickly, you're gonna have to Use a lot of shortcut keys. Rubik's Cube is awesome. This guy is awesome. Tell me what you think. I'm open to um, anything that looks weird or out of place. You know, like right down here. We want some overlap, but, you know, not a lot. We like it. I like it when the flowers are kind of coming out of the, you know, the letters. Again, easy enough to do. These are just, again, I'm making this go really fast. I could always use my, let's go up here. Uh, this layer, that's why we have these, when you do a render in dimension, you're gonna get these material selection masks. So let's see if this matches up actually, cause I did move things. Oh yeah, baby. Oh yeah. All right, Jason's in the house. What's up? So this is really cool. So basically this means I could just go through and select. Uh, use that color just for selection purposes and then put this in front of say everything else. So I can have a separate layer that has the word life and it's in front of the other things because that's what I did exactly right in here. So if we go back to this collage, you can see how this one's done. Hey, look, let's start, turn off some of this stuff. Here's like the ear on a little solo layer. Okay, then we have the person's head, which is in front of other things as well. And then in the very back is the full, the woman's head right there. So again, that's how that's done. How many layers are there? Great question. How would you know how many layers there are? Well, you wouldn't because I'm actually covering it up with my head. So let's move me over if I could really fast because it's behind me or maybe I just move Photoshop right down here in Photoshop. Let's close this, let's minimize bridge. Um, I have this usually set to layers. I don't know why, just to try to impress you. Uh, 114 layers, right? But that's how you do it. Layer count, um, and then all your other properties. And all this does is just shows how many layers are right in here, but there's 114. So yeah, you don't need to count. It keeps a tally for you and um, makes life easy. Here's another ugly flower. Let's get rid of that one. Let's take this one, put it up here. Let's 
All right. What else is going on? Um, oh, shoot. Down to my last minute. One thing I will say before I go is to use, like, color lookup ta tables to um, make sure you blend colors together. So make sure you do that as I kind of show this final version. The fact that I have uh, color lookup tables in here just kind of hides a multitude of sins is what I usually say. Kind of just ties the image together better. So, man, this went fast. Uh... All right. Thank you so much, everybody, for watching me. Got Jason up next, down in my last 15 seconds. Oh, thanks, Arslan. You're too kind. I hope to get this wrapped up um, at some point and then post it to Instagram. So hope you guys appreciate uh, what I'm making and hopefully you learn some things because this is all real-world Photoshop stuff. We got some real-world audio and video up next with Jason. So thanks so much for hanging out with me, folks. I'll see you guys very soon. See you online. Thanks so much.